You hear about earthquakes mm -hmm. a lot in California, it seems, but it turns out they're just as common here on the East Coast. Fox 5's Andre Puente talks to some of the world's top scientists and discovered six fault lines run through the busiest parts of Manhattan. An earthquake's an earthquake wherever it happens. Earthquakes, a natural disaster of the West Coast. But did you know earthquakes are a threat to us here in the East Coast as well? The, the fact that earthquakes cannot be predicted is a large part of what makes them so frightening. We are much more afraid of something when we don't know when it's coming. Dr. Lucy Jones is one of the country's top seismologists. She's authored the book, The Big Ones, How Natural Disasters Have Shaped Us. Large earthquakes here in the Northeast happen once probably every 100 years, and we are already long overdue because it's been over 100 years since we've seen a rather large earthquake here in the Northeast. Right, though it, it, one shouldn't think of overdue with in times of earthquakes. It's like, you know, you've, you've fl been flipping a coin and you have heads five times in a row are you now overdue for the for the tails no you still have the same chance damaging earthquakes have occurred in nearly every eastern state including new york the largest being magnitude 5.2 earthquakes that occurred in 1737 and 1884 terrified new yorkers reported cracked chimneys and plaster broken windows and objects thrown from shelves throughout the city here on the east coast we are in the middle of a tectonic plate and therefore have what are called intraplate earthquakes. These tend to be smaller and happen less frequently. If a magnitude 5 earthquake happens in California, it's potentially less devastating than a magnitude 5 earthquake in the East Coast. And that's because the geology in the East Coast, um, the ground is colder and older, more brittle. And so when seismic waves hit, it rings through the ground like a bell. And those uh, seismic waves can be felt at much greater distances on the East Coast. So at Columbia University, Teresa Sawi works as a seismologist in the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Here, they monitor and record data on earthquakes that occur in the Northeast, where seismic waves can travel easily through its dense ground. Earthquakes that happen all along the eastern seaboard they, they might be, be able to be felt as far north as, as New York City. This was evident in August of 2011 when a 5.8 magnitude earthquake struck 90 miles southwest of Washington, D.C. and was felt all the way here in New York City. This earthquake strong enough to crack the Washington Monument right through the middle. And did you know? In West Harlem, the subway isn't the only source of ground rumbling. A fault line lies right here along 125th Street. It's one of numerous fault lines that run through the city. In fact, there are six fault lines that run through Manhattan. One of them, called the East River Fault, runs down the western side of Central Park before turning at 32nd Street and heading to the East River. According to the New York City Area Consortium for Earthquake Loss Mitigation, the city's earthquake hazard is moderate. However, it is unclear whether one of the fault lines could be a source of a strong earthquake. And it is the potential damage that concerns many experts. I think you should be more concerned about your older mid-rise buildings, the sort of five to 10 story level, those probably haven't been engineered for winds and therefore will be more susceptible to what happens in the earthquakes. On the campus of Fordham University sits one of the country's oldest seismic observatories. Since 1924, worldwide earthquakes have been recorded right here in the Bronx. Inside this small Gothic stone building and 28 feet underground is a seismometer encased in plexiglass that collects data for the United States Geological Survey. We are one of the stations that monitors for seismic activity in the Northeast. Stephen Holler, an associate professor of physics at Fordham University, monitors and analyzes the data that comes into the underground lab. All of this old equipment that we have has basically been miniaturized and uh, put into this can. And so it does, it has the same functionality as uh, all the other devices that I showed you in here, um, but it's all just been compacted in here. For 100 years, this lab was responsible for collecting the data on significant seismic events like China's first atomic explosion in 1964. If there was uh, some shaking in this, uh, in, in this lab, the, the wave came up, it would actually cause this, this piece to oscillate up and down. Although this classic equipment has not been been used since the 90s, it remains here for students to experience the physical principles learned in the classroom. The Fordham seismometer is one of three in New York City. The other two are located in Central Park and at Queens College. Probably in your lifetime living in the East Coast, 
you will be feeling earthquakes, probably a few, and you have a decent chance of having a damaging one nearby. Yeah, sobering and timely with what we saw yeah. last night up in Westchester County, for sure. That is something that we know is sort of yeah, out there, the yeah. possibility for that. You never that. really think of it, though, no. because we always see what goes on in California and the Coast. West Coast. Yep, yeah, that's for sure.